If you think high school girls volleyball sounds like a nice little game, then you haven't been to Iowa City. Here girls volleyball is serious business, with some of the best young players in the country going head to head. And everyone in town watching in packed gyms or, that's right, live on TV. The girls who've come through here have reached the heights. Big time college scholarships with dreams of national titles and Olympic medals. This is a story about a girl who achieved none of those things, but might be the most celebrated one of them all. Hi, I'm Caroline Found. I'm a 5'8 setter. I've Until last year, Caroline Found played for Iowa City West High School. She was the team's setter. Caroline Found. The quarterback, the one who ran all the plays. All state as a junior, Caroline helped lead her team to the 2010 state title. But more than that, she was the team's heart and soul. People were drawn to her. It was like a moth to a light. Which could sometimes drive her coach, Kathy Bresnahan, crazy. At times, she could be a coach's nightmare. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, you never way? knew what she was going to do. You know, we'd be warming up for a match, and I couldn't find my setter, and she'd be off talking to the other teams. Away from the court, Caroline was the team's goofy ringleader. <laughs> and while she loved being just one of the girls, her teammates say that she looked for ways to stand out, right down to her nickname. She hated being called Caroline. She'd always be like, call me Lion, call me Liner. Never Carol. She went oh. Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Why? I mean, she thought I was like an old lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's name Carol, I want you to know. <laughs> And Line knew how good she had it. The youngest of three, her father Ernie, a doctor, and mother Ellen, a consummate volunteer, were the kind of parents that everyone wished were theirs and welcomed everyone into their home. Like after Caroline's end of the year banquet. We are having a celebration party for parents and families and friends. Everybody. In their backyard barn, Ernie built a kid's paradise, where the main attractions were the giant 40-foot swing in the basketball court. Kids would just come out and play poker out in the, uh, in the other room, shoot darts. Uh, to hang out. To hang out. The founds, it seemed, had a picture-perfect life, until in a few short months, it would all be shattered. Without warning, in the spring of 2011, Caroline's mother, Ellen, was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. A shock, I guess, would be an understatement. It uh, all just kind of came out of the out of the blue. And, and, and pancreatic cancer is is pretty terminal. Isn't pretty it? terminal. Pretty bad. Told that Ellen had only months to live, Caroline dedicated the upcoming volleyball season and her sneakers to her mother. By August, just days before Caroline's first game, Ellen was admitted to the hospital, and the end seemed near. Coach Bresnahan remembers waiting for the inevitable phone call, but when it came. She couldn't believe her ears. And very matter of fact, and said, there's been an accident, and Caroline was on a moped and didn't survive. And what was your response? Uh, disbelief. I didn't believe him. I mean, in my subconscious, I immediately thought they meant Ellen. Of course. And I said that. I said, you mean Ellen? They said, no, Caroline. But then no one could believe the news. Caroline had been to a church youth group meeting till 9.30 planning to go home and then head here to the hospital where she would spend the night with her mother. Riding along on a moped that she'd borrowed from a friend, she came down a familiar road that she'd traveled on hundreds of times before. But somehow she lost control of the moped and struck a tree. Caroline died instantly. And the way I found out is when I pulled in the driveway, there was a sheriff's car there. And uh, uh, I knew what that what that means. I knew I had to go into the hospital and tell Ellen. Of course, medication was, uh, she was on some medications and things to try to help, help with her, her discomfort. I'm not quite sure how well it sunk in right at first for her, but. Uh, uh. I just dropped my phone. Um, and I just like screamed, I didn't know what to do. And um, I called Kelly and I just asked her, like, is it true? A few days later, the team stood together at Caroline's viewing, joined by hundreds of people, even whole teams from across Iowa, 
who stood in line for up to four hours to pay their respects. Anytime someone loses a child, yeah. the grief is overwhelming. I would not belittle anybody else's loss by thinking ours was more important. But this was a kid that reached so many people. The funeral was held the next day. Ellen had to be transported by ambulance and wheeled into the church, there to sit by her husband before her daughter's casket. And when the service was over, Ernie prepared to help Ellen leave. Son of a gun, I started to get the wheelchair ready, and uh, she said, I'm going to walk out of here. And she did. She walked. Walked out of the church, reaching out, uh, extending her hand. It was unbelievable. Where she got the energy and where she got the courage, uh, I don't know. Last time she walked, I guess. Yeah. Seven days later, Ellen Found passed away. In just two weeks' time, Ernie had lost both his wife and a daughter. And the team from Iowa City West faced a daunting season ahead. Not that it mattered. Yeah, yeah. We were going to be horrible. Horrible. Yeah. So you lost your best athlete and your team leader, and there was no way we were going to have any success after that. The first question was how to replace the irreplaceable Caroline. You can't play volleyball without a setter, and nobody wanted to be at that spot on the court, and yeah. nobody wanted anyone else to be there either. Player after player was forced to try out until finally Coach Bresnahan and her staff made their decision. After our first competition and watching, uh, we just said, I said, Kelly's got to do it. It was a heavy-hearted choice because Kelly Fleeler and Caroline had been best friends since they were three. Coach Bresnahan wasn't surprised when Kelly said no. But then a teammate said the words that would change her mind. Caroline would want you to do it. Like, if anyone can do it, she would want you to do it. Caroline wouldn't ever let her team down, so, like, I couldn't just say no. So Kelly began a crash course in setting with 81 different play combinations to learn. For good luck, her teammates took Caroline's sneakers, the same sneakers she dedicated to her mother, and placed them under a chair that they had now dedicated to her. But the biggest inspiration came from her classmates. T-shirts were made bearing a simple phrase, live like line. And what started as a small tribute became the motto for the whole town. And as news of Caroline's story spread, requests for the shirts poured in from across the state. And at every game, tucked away in that sea of blue, you could spot Ernie. I did a lot for the players because I felt like it would help them. Uh, I had to do it for myself, too. As difficult as it was. Yeah, I had to keep going. I mean, those are her buddies that are out there. The team began to take on a whole new importance. Their games became a gathering place where the community could grieve and heal. It was a lot of pressure for a bunch of 17-year-old girls, and it showed. In Caroline's position, Kelly struggled. Another error. And the losses began to pile up. Coach Bresnahan was having a hard time, too. One day after practice, she broke down and looked for some kind of reassurance from Caroline. I said, Caroline, I need to know you're okay. And I go in the locker room, and, like, you know, it's like, Caroline, it doesn't have to be anything big. You know, just give me some sign that you, you know, it's all right. And all of a sudden, there's two pennies heads up. And then I happened to see some other kids in the locker room. And I said, you guys, we need one more penny, three pennies from heaven. Taken from the old adage, the superstitious coach always believed that pennies found in threes were sent from heaven. And I go out of the, uh, the locker room to leave, and right at the bottom of the locker room door was a third penny. And then after that, we just kept finding pennies all the time, groups of three. Pennies from heaven. Yeah. And that's when Coach Bresnahan saw the team kick into gear. Kelly developed a steady presence in the middle, and the wind started to come. Then it was time to celebrate some. The old familiar song became a rallying cry that didn't stop with girls' volleyball. The softball team joined in. And then everyone together at homecoming.
Coach Bresnahan's team rode the music and the momentum all the way to their conference title and qualified for the state playoffs. And they quickly won their first match. They won their second one just as easily. And next thing they knew, they'd made it back to where no one expected they'd be. Iowa City West needs just one more victory to repeat as state champions. But the team stepped onto the court feeling confident, but they played like they were back on their heels. Costly errors put them two sets down. City I another attack, and that goes between a couple of West players. To take home the title, they'd have to win the next three in a row, a seemingly impossible task. We had all kind of got a little bit of a feeling of, well, it's been a nice run. It's been a nice run, but not quite. But Lyons teammates had other ideas. We were like, okay, now we need to actually play volleyball. Losing just wasn't an option. Point by point, the girls clawed their way back into the match until it was all evened up in the final set. And Iowa City West has come right on back. And I think but their opponents got the first crack at the title. Championship point. Oh, no. Net serve. The serve went right into the net. It was almost as so though there were divine intervention. A few points later, West got their shot at finishing it out. And that's Iowa City West for the championship match point. They set it off to the left side, and a nice dig out of there by Molly Mason. Stump dumped over. It's down! They've done it! And the championship to the women of Troy! We had to do it for Caroline. And it was just like relief that we honored her as best we could. The outpouring. Uh, of love and affection and pride. It was just uh, just overwhelming. And Ellen and Caroline were, you could, hope, you could feel them. <laughs> so the team had believed like Line, and Kelly had played like Line, and Line's team was the champion again. It's over now. Her class is gone. They're, yeah. They've all gone to the winds. Yeah. Will people remember Caroline Found? I think so. It's kind of like paying it forward. I think a, a lot of us want to embody her best traits. She was a pretty amazing kid. Frank, this is one of those stories that people always say to me, how do you find your stories? How do we come by this one? This was amazing. The, the coach, Coach Bresnahan, wrote me a letter. And it was an extraordinary letter. I mean, it was so well said, so well placed. I said, I have to do this story. Did, uh, did, uh, I mean, it seems irrelevant now, but did the authorities ever determine how or why Caroline lost control of her scooter? No, she, she evidently, uh, there was a friend in a car, distracted, just for that moment hit the curb, whatever, and pitched forward. Yeah. And just the simplest thing of all, the guy the saddest. In the, real sad, the guy in the story who was, it's hard not to relate to, was Dr. Ernie. He lost his, his wife and his daughter, both in a span of a, of a week. How's yes. he doing? First of all, it's amazing that he's gotten this far, but he's a man of grace and power. I think he's gonna go forward. I know he's gonna go forward, he's gonna make it. Let me tell you, we had a party in which she invited us when we were out there. He did magic tricks, and here's what he's working on. He's determined to memorize Casey at the Bat. <laughs> he's, and play the piano while he does it. Oh. And he's that kind of, uh, and when he gets Casey at the Bat done, that'll be the next stage. It's a great story. All right, Frank, thanks.